Hi, I'm Lauren and welcome to the Lawn Fawn Fans Fall YouTube Hop. We are sponsored this time around by Cat Scrappiness and it's World Card Making Day. How cool is that? We are going to be making this fun interactive card today, so let's get to it. I've cut a piece of white cardstock in half and I am going to be stamping boxes from the set box costumes before and afters and I'm starting with the fox that doesn't have a costume on and on the other piece of paper I am stamping the fox with the skeleton costume on and I'm using my we are memory keeper stamping tool because I want to make sure my lines are really crisp especially the fox with the skeleton costume because it is like a solid stamp for the skeleton costume part I want it to be really nice and I'm using these post-it notes to create some masks. Most of my images have a white little border, so I also cut my mask to have a little extra border. And I'm using Distress Oxide in scattered straw around the two foxes. This is gonna be the lighter of the two colors. And then I'm bringing in fossilized amber and going around that scattered straw. And I'm doing this for both. And then I'm bringing back the lighter color and just trying to blend that to give it a, a more even flow between the two colors just so it blends really nicely. I'm using my dyes just to make sure I've placed enough color around the images. And I'm using some gold silk just to add some splatter. And then I'm pulling off my mask because it is a post-it note and the splatter could bleed through if I leave it too long. I've used my pro markers to color in my foxes and I'm just using one of my stencils to block off the fox so I can use ground espresso to add, basically I'm trying to ground my critters. I wanna add some a ground to it. And I'm using more silk in dark roast to, just to keep that splattered look throughout the whole background of my fox. And I'm gonna do this to both of the images, making sure it looks like my foxes are standing on something and they're not just floating in the background. So now that these are done, I'm going to use my heat gun just to make sure all of my splatter is dry. And then I'm going to put my dyes in place. So the fox that does not have a costume will get the larger die and the fox that does have a costume is going to be the pull part of this before and afters magic picture changer die. So I'm using some purple tape to keep it in place and I'm going to run it through my die cut and I have my two pieces. I'm using my bone folder to fold over all the creases on the magic picture changer of the larger piece. It's a really thin piece and Lompon recommends starting from the center and going out to fold over those really thin pieces. And I also do the fold on the scoring of the top. Now I'm going to use some 1 8 inch double sided sticky tape. I want to make sure that these pieces stay sealed with really strong adhesive. And now I'm going to use my embossing tool, which has baby powder inside, all over the cut pieces. There is a tendency that these pieces can get stuck and the baby powder just helps remove any static that could cause these pieces to not slide well. So as you can see, I did it all over front and back of the two, as well as when it's assembled front and back, just to make sure that, that picture slider moves freely and that there aren't any pieces getting stuck. And once I'm satisfied with how the magic picture changer dies are in place, I'm going to make sure that that pull up piece is centered in the larger piece and I'm going to start releasing the sticky tapes release paper. And I'm just folding them down in half just to make sure I get it lined up before I completely seal these together. And as you'll see a lot through the video, I pull on it and make sure that it's moving freely and smoothly before I glue my card together. 
Okay, so now that is done, the mechanism is done, we're going to start putting the slim line together. I'm using the largest slim line die set from Lawn Fawn, and I'm using ground espresso again to distress the edges of this cardstock. And I'm going to also use that dark roast splatter on the background of this piece as well. And I use my heat embossing tool to dry and I mistakenly <laughs> smudge one of my little drops. Of course, the one drop that's not dry, I just ran my finger through it. <laughs> that's okay. The mechanism is going to be on the back side of my slimline piece and it's going to show through this really cute door from the shut the front door die set from Lawn Fawn and I noticed that I will need to bring up some of that yellow so I quickly add a little bit more of the fossilized amber distress oxide ink and I cut two different pieces from this die set. I cut one in this pretty orange pattern paper and the other in this brown wood grain paper both from Lawn Fawn and I'm just using the door frame from the orange and I'm going to keep the door attached to the brown piece. So now I need to figure out where this door needs to go because I am going to cut a hole since I need my fox to show through the front door. So I'm using my pencil and I'm marking the top of my mechanism as well as where the ground is for my mechanism. And I'm outlining the orange door just below where the top of the mechanism is so that way there won't be any interference with the door and the mechanism. And I'm using my trimmer to cut just that rectangle out. So now that I have that, I can line up just to make sure that everything is showing how I want it to show and that the hole will fit in that door frame. And next I'm gonna cut out where the pull tab of the mechanism will need to come through the slim line as well. So I'm using some pencil marks of the width of that pull tab and I'm using my cutter again to just create a little slot for where that white piece will come through from behind the slim line. And I'm just using a retractable cutting knife to open up that slot. And I noticed that I actually cut it a little off center, so I'm gonna use my knife just to make it a little bigger because my, my eye saw is not centered and it bothered me, so I wanted to fix it. So now that that's done, I can glue my door onto the front of my card. So I'm using, again, that strong double-sided sticky tape to outline the door frame of the brown piece of paper. And I'm lining the door inside of the square, and I wanna make sure that that crease of my door is right along the edge of the cutout. And once that is good, I can release the rest of the release paper for the rest of the door frame and glue that on. Using my bone folder, I just make sure that there's a really good seal. And then I'm gonna actually use wet glue for the orange door frame that I'm gluing over. I didn't think the double-sided sticky tape was necessary, plus it gives me a little wiggle room to make sure I've lined it up correctly. And now that that's done, I'm just gonna use a clear block to put some extra pressure. And I'm gonna use my embossing tool again to make sure that there is no stickiness on the back side of the door. Again, I wanna make sure my mechanism moves smoothly. Now, because my door is free floating, I need to add some outside grounding. And I have this piece of green cardstock with a grassy border and I am die cutting it with the large slim line as well, just to keep the stitching continuous. And I'm using my door frame to make sure that there's no grass showing and interfering with how, with how the door is opening. So I measured it with a pencil and just used my paper snips to cut that out and use my eraser to get rid of those pencil lines. And of course I need to distress it so I'm putting on some mowed lawn in distress oxide and I'm going to sprinkle that with some silk from Fun Stamper's Journey in a sage color. And once that is dry, I'm just using my wet glue to adhere that onto the front of my card background. Again, I want to make sure my door doesn't interfere with it so that the card receiver can still open that front door. And I die cut some more pieces from the shut the door die set and cut out the steps up to the door in that same pretty orange 
pattern paper as well as the door handle. So I'm using some wet glue and adhering that door handle into the scored piece as well as this tiny little <laughs> circled die cut. I'm using my jewel picker and wet glue to glue that down. And now everything that is gonna be just glued directly onto the slimline card is done. So now I want to get my card assembled. I cut a piece of sturdy 110 cardstock and cut that to the same size of the large slimline. So it is cut to eight and a half by seven and scored at three and a half to make an eight and a half by three and a half card. So now I also realize I need to work on my pull tab before I glue everything down. So I cut this die cut out of the magic picture add-on that says pull. And because of the placement, I need to make my pull tab a little longer. So I have this extra piece of cardstock. I'm using some purple tape to see if that is enough. And when I pull it up, I notice that it's not long enough that when you pull it up, you'll see that the edge of the paper. So I die cut another longer piece. And I am just gonna, again, make sure that the piece is long enough and figure out exactly where it has to be placed. I'm seeing if I can make do with my original one, but it's, it's not long enough. So I, again, I'm gonna push that piece on top and I'm going to make sure that it's sufficient and I can trim that down and use some wet glue to glue that down to the original pull tab just to make it a little bit longer and I'm going to put that pull piece by gluing it with wet glue on the top so that the card receiver knows that this is where they're supposed to pull to see how fun this card is. <laughs> There's also this tiny little inside of the P that I'm putting a little tiny glue dot as well as using my jewel picker and baking up that little tiny piece and gluing it in there. It's the little things, right? Oh, and this is where I realized that I meant to do this with, oh, with the pull tab already through my slot opening. But luckily it fit, it worked out. I don't know if you saw my hands, but I was happy. Okay, so now to glue this piece onto my card base, I cut some foam tape really thin and put some foam tape around the rest of it, making sure that nothing interfered with my interactive piece. And I'm putting this onto my card base. And yes, it still works, success. <laughs> so now I'm gonna pop up these steps. I'm gonna use that double foam tape again and place that right under the door, making sure that it doesn't interfere and the door can still open. And now I've cut out some letters out of some spiffy speckled paper from Lawn Fawn. It's kind of the yellowy color that has some subtle splatter. Again, keeping that look consistent. And I'm using Distress Oxide in Ice Marmalade just to have a little bit of ombre effect to my letters. And it spells out trick or treat. And I wanted to make sure that my pull tab wouldn't interfere because I was going to pop them up, but then I decided I'm just gonna glue them directly on with wet glue. So I'm gonna glue all these letters down. I don't want them perfect. I kinda like, I like that they're in different directions. It just looks more fun. And I'm using my clear block to add pressure so that way those letters dry. And again, triple, quadruple checking my pull tab, make sure everything works. And I didn't really like that big open yellow space, I thought it was missing something. So I got really daring and I stamped boo in black ink above the fox and I thought it just added a little more and it made, me, made it feel like it wasn't so empty. So now I have these fun sequins from Stampin' Up and I'm just gonna place sequins in various spots around my card and use my glue and my jewel picker to glue them down. So now that the outside is done, I'm gonna stamp the inside. I'm using the Happy Halloween Sentiment in black ink, and I'm gonna use carrot ink to stamp four little candy corn inside. So I actually thought I was done here, but I decided that I wanted to add a few more things. <laughs> I thought the outside looked a little plain, so I cut two pumpkins from the pick of the patch set and I colored them with my pro markers and added some jack-o-lantern faces and I'm gonna glue these down 
behind the grass on the sides of the door, kind of like he's got some jack-o'-lanterns on his front porch. And I'm using my tweezers just to lift up that grass so that way I can slide those pumpkins in. And that little smudge was still bothering me, so I cut out one of the cute little birds in a pumpkin jack-o'-lantern costume and put it in there so it would hide that smudge but also not interfere with my pull tab. So here is the final card with my pull tab. I love it. I'm so excited that this idea turned out how I imagined it. I was nervous because it's actually my first time using the magic picture changer die but I think the card turned out great. So thank you so much for joining us on this hop. The next person on the hop is listed in my description below. And don't forget to leave a comment for a chance to win a gift card from Cat Scrappiness. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.